Welcome back. President Biden is finishing up a West Coast swing today, leaving California, heading to Portland to campaign for Oregon's Democratic nominee for Governor Tina Kotek. After keeping a relatively low profile this midterm season, Democrats have held Oregon's governor's office since the 80s. I think it's uh, Washington. It's that Oregon and Washington State have some of the longest streaks of the same party being uh, holding the governor's mansion. But this year, it's a close race, and the presence of a third-party candidate is threatening to end that streak. I'm joined now by my panel, NBC News senior political editor Mark Murray, Democratic pollster Cornell Belcher, Republican strategist and former White House political director Sarah Fagan. You know, Mark, it's interesting to see Biden on the campaign trail. He campaigned for Karen Bass and Tina Kotek. <laughs> We're not seeing him campaign for Mandela Barnes and Rafael Warnock. Or, or John Fetterman, or right. John Fetterman. Right. Yeah, and, you know... As, as we've actually reported, Chuck, the White House is going to go where Democrats want him. Mm -hmm. And Oregon is a place where the Democratic president would want it to would, want would a three way be, race, too. Correct. Yeah. And, you know, he has to wave hands and say, there are two Democrats in this race. You have Tina Kotek, the Democratic nominee, then Betsy Johnson, who's a former Democrat who's in the independent. Uh -huh. And there is a strategy to keep the Republican Christine Drazen away from the governor's mansion is to say, for Joe Biden to say, we have our Democrat in the race, it's Tina Kotek. So there's mm -hmm. a huge logic there. Also in yeah. L.A. mayor, but you're right, not in the ba not yeah. not in the most important battlegrounds. Although we do know that he is going to be doing something for John Fetterman later uh, in, in October. Yeah, you know, Sarah Fagan, it struck me as I was talking to him. Mm -hmm. You were when you were at the White House. Mm -hmm. You had two different midterms. Probably one where everybody wanted Bush, and then one where nobody wanted Bush. <laughs> right? And, and I've talked to this White House. They're very much like, hey, we're all on the same message. We get it. We'll go where we're asked. That's what you have to do. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, the, the president wants to win because he wants to maintain majorities mm -hmm. in the House, House and Senate. And uh, so you don't really have a choice. But it is hard on their egos. Yeah. I mean, let's not, <laughs> let's not kid ourselves. Right. Uh, you know, I, I recall campaigning in Nebraska, Kentucky in 2006. I also, rec <laughs> I also recall in 2002 where 20,000 people would show up right. for the motorcade. Right. And so, you know, yeah, political good fortunes can yeah. turn very quickly in this business. All right, let's get down to brass tacks, where things stand. Cornell, how do you feel where your party is today versus where it was two weeks ago? I, it's static. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look, I, I think if you, if you, if you now, Chuck, if you say, what do I think about the party today versus seven months ago, yeah. I'd say it's, 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 moving, it's moving in the right direction. But I think we're at a point now, and you see this in polling, and people don't understand this. Look. You know, you've got still a lot of these polls. You got seven, eight, nine, ten percent of people still undecided. And as much as we would want this to break one mm -hmm. way or the other, the last couple of weeks of this is why so many campaigns hold on to so much money. In the mm -hmm. last couple of weeks of this, there's pouring money, pouring money. You see, super PACs begin to sort of pour more money in these campaigns because these eight, nine, ten percent yeah. of folks who are still sitting out there are going to make or break this election. Sarah, I saw a number that I'm. I, I got to ask this question. At what point is there? Um, do you run out of places to use money? <laughs> because I saw Georgia's up to $120 million. I mean, what's left to buy? I mean, like, what do you do when you, when you want to spend more money but don't have the places to have it? I mean, we could have a whole show on this. <laughs> yes, and good. how much money is, is at the end really just wasted. Yeah. And, you know, politics in many ways really leads corporate America in terms of innovation. And I think that remains true. Mm -hmm. But what you're going to see in upcoming cycles is very different buying patterns because mm -hmm. because of the fragment because mm -hmm. of how fragmented the media is. Mm -hmm. So these consultants are going to have to approach things differently because, you know, basically there, people are wasting money. Well, now basically, on the thirty percent right? of the yeah. targets are seeing all the ads, right. and and so seventy percent of the people are not seeing ads. And so when you start thinking about that's an amazing stat. Mm -hmm. Seventy percent of people are not seeing any ads. Our media, they're, they're seeing some of them are sure. seeing a few ads, but basically most of the top tiers are seeing these ads eighty or ninety times, yeah. and the bottom sort of thirty percent are seeing almost nothing, and then the people in the middle are kind of seeing what you would expect between six and ten. So you right. think our media consultants yeah. need to uh, need to update their their ways well, of going about, it, 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 or maybe take some money from our media consultants? Look, it, it, it's it's a function of getting the, all yeah. this data together to be able to make these decisions, and it's it's tough and expensive to do that. That's yeah. nice of you to say. Mm -hmm. Mark, let's get back. One of the things that we wrote today in first read was, you do get a sense that both parties are going, going wait a minute, our path to the Senate, we need more paths. we got to get more paths to 50 for the Democrats, 51 for the Republicans, the Peter Thiel money check in Arizona, the Chuck Schumer check in North Carolina. Um, you know, I, it, it does seem... Neither party's feeling good here. Well, and there's a logic to having North Carolina and Arizona. They've been very close battlegrounds. All week. Mm -hmm. Right. All actually, year. the last 10 years, yeah, you yeah. know. So, so there is a logic there. I, I, to me, in my, where my head is, 
it still is the game of three. Mm -hmm. That the party that ends up winning two out of the three of Nevada, Georgia, and Pennsylvania is going to win the Senate majority. Mm -hmm. But you're right. Like, all of a sudden, if you are the Senate right. Democrats and say, well, can we put one more state back right. on? We've had conversations where Democrats say, man, we'd love to be able to be able in North Carolina if we can. So can't go right. in there. Arizona, again, is a state in which Republicans it's, do have a registration advantage it's, there. It's, it's driving it's, national Republicans crazy that Arizona is like, what do you mean we're not finishing this target, right? Well, you're not finishing these targets. Democrats aren't finishing these targets because Joe Biden's approval rating is underwater. Inflation's at 8%. Mm -hmm. Crime is up in a lot of these major cities, uh, and Democrats are spending almost all their money on abortion, which is an important issue for mm -hmm. a part of the electorate, mm -hmm. but it's about the fourth most important issue uh, to voters overall. Well, well, by the way, Cornell, I have noticed it funny in this critique, and I think two weeks ago I would have agreed with you uh, that it's all abortion. I've noticed that Medicare and Social Security are showing up in ads this week. Oh. For, you know, <laughs> and, and sort of the way taxes always show up in an ad to the Republicans. <laughs> yeah. Certain things are given, but... I hadn't seen it before this week. Well, two things. One, I, I want to also go back to the cross-pressure test. Because, look, it, 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 your, for your viewers, let's, let's get in the weeds a little bit. Here's the cross-pressure. If you're sitting in the DCCC and, you've got, and you're trying to hold on to, to at least hold on to all these seats, you have incumbents who you've got to spend your money on incumbents. Last right. time DCCC got in trouble because they said, oh, you're spreading too thin. You're trying to put too many, mm -hmm. too many on, the playing, play, on the playing field. Yeah. And, and now they're getting criticized. Oh, well, you're not putting this in play. Well, the DSCC, though, play. seems to be overcorrecting that strategy. They don't even want to play in Ohio I, and Florida. I, or North Carolina. Yeah, you until know? I mean, recently. Yeah, yeah but, they, but, they, but, they, but they have to. But the first thing, and I'm telling you, because I sat there at the desk at DCCC yeah. before, back in the Gephardt days a long time ago, <laughs> uh, and, you, and you have to take care of the incumbents first. Yeah. Now, on the Medicare and Social Security, it's a good hit. hit. You know, I, I've tested in polling, right? Yeah. It is a good hit on, on, on especially for middle-of-the-road voters who are now worried about their retirement. Yeah. The ideal that your, these entitlements are going to be cut because of Republicans, it's a good hit, Chuck. Mark, I, the, the, the thing that I keep sort of trying to figure out in this election is, is why, and it's something we're going to tease for a little bit next week, why is a Kevin Stitt in Oklahoma in trouble and also uh, a, a Lujan Grisham in a New Mexico in trouble, right, a blue stater? It feels like this is a, an electorate that's cranky in general, and I think that that might make this anti-incumbent. It's cranky in general, and then you ended up looking at our own poll, the NBC News poll, other surveys that are out there. Everybody's super unpopular. There isn't a popular political figure. And again, we don't have to go all back to... All 18 nominees in our top nine Senate races, I think they're all underwater, maybe except Mark Kelly. It was, maybe. It, it was just 14 years ago when Barack Obama and John McCain were incredibly... They had fave unfave ratings, like a plus 10, plus 20. It was you know, we're, we're gone from those days, and so it's really not that hard to basically say hey, Joe Biden is down, or you can even go to the governor of Oklahoma. You can go anywhere and say, these politicians aren't serving you. This is such a cranky electorate. Everyone's unpopular. Everyone's and, and, vulnerable. And Sarah, I've noticed a lot of incumbents who are like, why are you running negative ads? It seems like a lot of incumbents are, nerve, are feeling like they better use their insurance policies, I guess, and, and go at, don't leave anything uh, wasted, I guess. Well, I think that's been a bit of a trend in yeah. politics in recent years. You see kind of more negativity longer, uh, less branding ads, so to speak. Especially in races where you don't seem to need it sometimes. Yes, yeah, sometimes. And sometimes there's good reasons for the top of the ticket to do that because they're trying to, mm. to bring in, a, a, you know, the state house or the state senate or something. And they're right. trying to, to um, you know, make sure people are voting ticket wide, mm -hmm. not just for them. But, you know, I think, look, I think generally, you know, we're at a call it a low point in mm -hmm. politics right now where, yeah. you know, the combination of so many factors over the last 15 years yeah. just has both parties very unpopular. Can it, I weigh in quickly on very that? Very quick. Yeah. I, I just got out of field yeah. poll in a, in, a, in a safe Democrat seat, and yes, they're going to spend money to hit their hit their Republican because, quite frankly, they're afraid of a wave, a Republican wave election. Yeah. Mm. If it's a Republican wave election, this candidate who was nowhere mm -hmm. all of a sudden, if he, he, he can beat you. Interesting. All right. Mark Cornell, Sarah, thank you. Enjoy your Friday. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.